homesteading to prepping to common horse sense, we are College Hill Farm. Welcome back to College Hill Farm. Well, today we are on our third episode of uh, converting a Harbor Freight drill press to a mill. Uh, really, it's more like the fourth episode because I did a review of this little VVOR table in between. Uh, it's summertime, so here on the homestead, I'm generally 100% covered up doing gardening work. But it's rained for the last three weeks, so I've had an opportunity to get in the in the shop and do some stuff with this mill. Now, my shop is all in disarray. It gets that way every summer because I don't work in the shop generally. I work outside. So you bring something in from outside that you were using to work, and you just set it down in the shop. So the shop's all in disarray. But we're going to uh, try and work through that. And... I'm going to continue to show you how I'm setting this up. So, uh, of course, we've got a, a Harbor Freight drill press. And right now I've got just a, a router bit in it. I showed you how we uh, could cut wood with it. So wood in the router bit, in the with a router bit in it, was doing real good cutting in this drill press. So I could freehand a piece of wood uh, after we lowered the the drill press down into it you could freehand a piece of wood and do pretty good uh, if you drew a if you drew a, a pattern on it you could probably do real good but uh, I want to mill uh, stuff like plastics and aluminum and brass and so today what we're going to do we're going to attach the the drill press table we're going to attach this cross feed table to the drill, uh, to the drill table, and then we're going to work on uh, a couple of other pieces of metal and see if they'll work without pulling this chuck out. Uh, that's what I'm mainly concerned with. I'm concerned that this Morse tapered chuck will, when you start milling something coming from the side, it will just shake too much and just fall out, and we'll have to put a collet up in there. So. We just have to wait and see how that pans out. So I'm going to get uh, this table ready. Now, what I've got to do, and you probably won't need to see all of that, so I'll uh, try and get it done without taking so much time. What I need to do is in these grooves right here, I need to put bolts on either side of this table in these two grooves to hold it down. Now. As far as it goes, you can move this table right to left like this as long as it's loosened. And somebody said, well, what about if you move it in relation to this chuck? Well, of course, when you move it, everything is in relation to where the bit is. Okay, it's just that's the way it's going to be. So once you get it and get it locked in, if you want to keep it at a 90 degree angle, then everything's at 90 degree angles to this table. Okay? Everything's at 90 degree angles to the table. Not uh, necessarily to the bit. But if you don't move the table and just let this part move the table, then you will maintain your 90 degrees regardless where you start at. You can start over here or start over there, but everything is at 90 degrees to the table, not to the bit but 90 degrees to the table so once you get your table set up then and then you'll move it through 90 degrees the bit is stationary does that make sense okay so I'm gonna see if I can't uh, get something now I've got these I've got these, but if you look, they just about won't fit in these grooves. Okay, so probably what I am going to have to do is maybe drill these grooves out a little bit. Uh, 
the way this works, these are T-bolts. Of course, they're too small. This is a three-quarter inch gap, and I've got half-inch T-bolts, but they'll go in there enough that, that they will lock down enough to hold this down. Now, this one is absolutely too long. See, it'll be in the way of this, so I've got to put a smaller bolt on it. But let's, uh, let's see if I can get a smaller bolt and if it will lock down in there. Okay, there's a smaller one. I believe that will work with the big with the big uh, big caps I have for it. But will this table clear there? I think so. But and looking at that, these are still too long. See, there's a there's a spot right here. Let me show you. See there? There's a spot where there's no threads, and my cap head wouldn't come all the way down, so I've got to use a shorter one of these. So these are still too long, and I don't have a shorter one. So I'm going to have to come up with something else. Okay, I think I've got a solution. Uh, this is a 3 8 bolt. Uh, it screws into these T heads just fine. And then it will go right through the slot. Get in there. Right through the slot and up here like this. And I think it will screw down enough, but it might not. This one stopped. Yeah, it's bottomed out, see? So it's not going to screw down enough to lock onto this. I was in hopes that it would. I've got some shorter ones. This one feels like it's going to do it, but this one is not. Now, I've got a couple shorter bolts. Let's see if that will fit in there and possibly lock that down. That might work, but I'm afraid it's not going to be enough grab to hold it consistently. But there's only one way to find out, isn't it? See if those will hold on and then we'll go from there. Okay, that's one. Now I've got two more holes to fill. One here and one here, so I'll do this one then I'll have to move the table. So I'll come back to you when I get it all fastened down. I've got four bolts in. Uh, I'm going to move the table, bring it all the way back. Now if you watch the video about this Vivor table, you know that if you screw it too far back and this way it comes off, out. Okay, it comes completely off. So, I'll get this screwed back here and get the table locked down. And then let's see if we can mill something. Uh, I'm going to start off with plastic. That's the, that's the first thing I'm going to try. Uh, then I'm going to try something a little harder and something a little harder and something a little harder. Okay. Now, I've got that pulled back, not completely, hold on, come on, come 
back a little more. Make sure these are all tight, because if they're not, it'll waggle. So, we got it there. Now what I want to do is I want to fasten something down to this. Now, I've got a bench vise, or a, or a, a drill table vise. But right now I don't want to use that. I want to fasten down. I have, what do I do with it? I have a piece of plastic that I want to use. Now what I've done, this is an old piece of uh, plastic molding for wet locations and it's painted. It's white uh, polyethylene or polypropylene, smooth on this side. You know, smooth on that side. You can see where I cut it with a saw, it's real rough. So what I want to do is I want to see if I can mill that. Well, in order to do it, I need to fasten this down to the table. Well, I've got some dogs. That can be used to fasten this down with. Okay? Uh, so, but the problem is, is I don't have the right T bolts. But what I did was I went and bought these. They fit. Nope, that one won't fit. Let's see. Let's get one that'll fit in there. That one doesn't fit either, so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to grind off one side of these so that they fit in this T-slot. Okay, so I'm going to do that. I'm just, you don't need to see it. I'm just going to grind off a side of a couple of these till they fit in this T-slot so I can use these hold-down dogs. Uh, I'm probably going to just use it right here like this and clamp it from the back and then put one right there and clamp it right here that way I can cut I can mill off that end without uh, without too much trouble so let me get a couple of these cut where they'll fit what about a regular bolt will it fit in there yeah but here's what happens if you try and put a regular bolt in there see this regular bolt you can't see that see this regular bolt when you put it in it just spins, so you would never get it tightened up to dog that down with. What I need is something that won't spin in there. And a bigger bolt won't fit because that, that 3 8 bolt, that's the biggest you can get in there. Now, I could take and add a little tab of welding onto the side of that and probably get that to work without spinning. But I'm just going to take and use these. too big. Use these. They fit in the groove, but the head is too big. But the square part here of this carriage bolt is not so big that it'll spin. So I'm going to take and grind off two of these sides and make this like a T-bolt. Okay, so I'll go over here and grind them. I'll do it and then come back to you. Okay, I've got them cut. Here they are. Just flattened them out. They go right through there. And will hold solid 
where I want them to. Now, this is going to go on here like that. And I'm going to bring it to this side because I'm going to take and put another one right here to help hold it down. Now, I'll bring it back like that and put this one right there. And I'll get a cap and put on it. Okay, pull it over there close. see that that's going to be moving. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to put something behind here to stop that. Okay, it can be a, another piece of the material you've got. Okay, or it can be one of your risers. Now I have these blocks. Okay, they move in and out. That will help hold this up to the height it needs to be so it's not moving. Okay, let me get this on there and fasten down. It's 11.30 seconds. Okay, I'm just going to fasten this down. Now that's not going nowhere. Okay. That's not going nowhere. I don't even think I need this next one. So, fasten it down a little tighter. Are you ready to try and see if this bit remember it's just a router bit. You want to see if it's going to cut this? I know I want to. So let me raise you up just a little bit, right there. Now lock this table down. All right, time for the jack acid test.
what do you think? Let's have a look. See how smooth it is. It feels fairly smooth. Although, I'm going to have to work on the angle of the vi of that. But I figure I can work on that a little later. Right now, if you look, right here is the problem. I don't have this lined up. I'm going to line this up now with the edge of the, of the table. Because what it did was... If you look right here, look right here, this is wider than that. But what's wrong is I don't have this set square to the table. So I'm going to move this, set it square to the table, and see if I can square that up. Loosened up. Drop my wrench. Of course I did. Got too much stuff on my table. That makes for unsafe working conditions. That's what I do sometimes. Loosen this up. Now I want to set this square square with the the fence here. Square with the table. You know, you'll have to square everything to your table. Alright, right there. And it takes some finagling to do this stuff. It just don't happen. You gotta take your time and get everything lined up. It's that way on a regular meal too. You folks who meal, you know that. Alright. Now let's see. Having that lined up there, let's see if we can't make this a nice straight square line. Well, the end of that, that's assuming that this is cut square. Okay, let's try that. Before I do that, I need to run this over and set my depth.
Now, I had it, did it with this paint so that we could test some things. So let's take this loose. Okay, it's a little rough. Okay, but is it at right angles here? Let's grab a square. Have a look at that. Well, I can't even see it. There, have a look at that. There it is. Dead on. Right angle. Okay. Dead on. I'm pretty pleased with that. Cutting this plastic. Cutting this stuff. What about cutting with a regular bit and cutting, say, a piece of brass. So, let's get this stuff off. Well, maybe not. Maybe I can use this and cut and put a piece of brass on here. How about that? Just a piece of brass. I can put it on like that. I'll need to I think I'll mount it on the other side so you can see better. Right there. But obviously, for this piece of brass, I can't mill it with that. Okay? I might be able to. I don't know. But I wouldn't want to try it. So I'm going to take that out. I'm going to put this in. It's a four flute mill bit. Uh, Yes, I tighten at every hole. Okay. Now, I want to loosen this and let it go up. I'll get this table positioned and then I'll come back to you. Okay. I have this set up in such a way that I'm going to mill a flat place right here uh, on this piece of uh, on this piece of uh, brass. So I don't know. I may have the mill speed or the drill speed set too high. I'm going to move some of this stuff off the table because I'm milling metal now and I'm not milling plastic. Plastic I wouldn't care to mill with my hands. Okay, to let it sit still and just push it, but Metal, you can't do that way. Now, a word to the wise, always have safety glasses on. And eventually, I think, in looking at this, I'm going to have to put me a, uh, 
mount me a plastic piece right here that comes down right there to keep these chips off of this screw. I've already had to uh, had to fix, had to clean that screw off with that plastic. It made it not want to turn good. So definitely I'm going to have to put a, a chip guard right here and over to there. I think I can get away with a with a set of magnets and a piece of plastic but we'll see I, I'll show you that in the next video what I come up with but this is just a test video with the table and the and the uh, bits to see how I'm gonna do my optimum thing is to be able to machine brass and copper and aluminum and plastic I'm not that necessarily after being able to machine steel. Now what I've got in here is a four flute cutter. Generally you use a four flute cutter for uh, for aluminum. Uh, I don't know what to use for brass. I've never milled brass before so we're about to get an education both of us. So let's uh, get this turned on and see if this will cut that brass. drop it a little bit and go back the other way. I hope I didn't drop it too much. What do you think? I'd say it milled that pretty good. One thing I noticed, 
as I was milling this, this uh, table that moves in and out, it moved. So you're going to have to make sure when you get it to one side, you're going to have to crank it back until it starts to move again and catches, or else it'll move on you. It moved out. But if you look at that, I machined a pretty good groove in that. So will it cut uh, brass? Oh, yeah, it'll cut brass. Uh, these chips are so fine, they're almost like dust. I would bet that this bit would do better at maybe 3,000 RPMs instead of four, four and a half. Okay, what are my final thoughts? Well, first off, uh, this uh, did good uh, machining the plastic as long as you set the up everything to the side of the table, to the square part of the table. It does good at machining plastic, and it'll do it at right angles and make a 90 degree and that stuff. This, uh, these rollers, you got to make sure that they're at the end of their play when you start machining, especially metal. The plastic, it didn't make much difference, but the metal made a huge difference. Uh, of course, it's a lot more pressure on it machining the metal. Could I have taken a bigger bat? Yeah, I could. I think I could have. I actually think I could have taken a lot bigger bite, but I just machined off like uh, a sixteenth of an inch per pass was all on that uh, brass piece, and I machined off about an eighth of an inch of the plastic per pass. So now the next video we will put a vise on here and we'll try it on copper aluminum and steel okay so be sure to tune in for that video and then uh, if you like this stuff this homesteading do it yourself making something out of nothing kind of stuff be certain to come on out to the channel and subscribe we do this kind of stuff all the time sometimes one sometimes five videos just depends on what's going on in the homestead that weekend uh, I don't know when I'll get back to this next video because the rain's over for a few days, and I've got to get in the garden, so it'll be a while before I get back to the next video. But be looking for it. I'll put it all in a playlist. So subscribe and come back.